can't take it anymore. My husband is ruining my life after finding out about my affair. I can't believe it. It's just hard to believe it. I know I should have thought of the consequences and outcomes of the abomination that I had done. I was too cooped up in a bubble of loneliness and hunger to find happiness. My happiness was no longer in my marriage. The spark was no longer there. My husband also had an input on why I had resorted to finding happiness outside our marriage. I know I shouldn't have gone outside my marriage and broken my vows. But what do you think I should have done? If you were no longer happy in your marriage yet still loved your partner and held them in high regards, what would you have done to find your happiness? I have seen my husband angry, sad, furious, and happy, but I had never seen the monster that he had become. How can you claim to love someone and ruin their lives after finding out that they had an affair? I'm not justifying what I did as a good thing, and no one should ever go outside their marriage and break their vows they had made in front of the Lord and their guests but why not just divorce them and let them be? I still think my husband took a very merciless decision. It's really, and I don't know what to do anymore. Please help me. My name is Kim, female, 29, and my husband is Jordan, male, 31. My husband is a very loving, understanding, and a very romantic person. He always makes sure to show genuine love to those he holds dear in his heart. I was one of those he held dear in his heart. When Jordan was growing, he had a condition called Intermittent Explosive Disorder, IED, which is a mental health condition marked by frequent impulsive anger outbursts or aggression. Well, I didn't know that up until we got married, when his colleague came to hug me and kissed my hand on our wedding day. He became so furious to a point that he actually wanted to just eat the poor guy alive, he busted on the guy and ended up being physical with him. I didn't understand why he would do that because the guy didn't do anything wrong. I tried to stop him, but it was like he was in his own dimension and he didn't want to be stopped. I was so embarrassed and heartbroken about what he did to a point that I left the venue and went home. I started being scared of him. I couldn't even look at him or even try to be near him after the predicament that had taken place on our wedding day. A few days later, as I was avoiding him, he asked to speak to me. That was when he told me about his condition and that it had started when he was six years old when he had to experience seeing his mother getting physically abused by his stepdad, who would also get physical with him. He grew up with that anger. He told me that his condition would only last for about 30 minutes, or when the rage goes down or gets satisfied. His childhood story was depressing, heartbreaking, and sad, but that didn't mean he should act like a monster to people whenever he felt threatened. So I vowed to help him, or get him help, so he would at least be able to control his condition even in tough situations. I knew that it wasn't going to be easy to convince to get help or speak to someone about it, but trying never hurt anyone right. As his wife, I had to put my fears aside and find a way to help my husband in every way possible. So I tried talking to him about getting him a therapist, so we would get to the bottom of everything, so he would be able to control the anger he had. He declined my plea at first, but I convinced him and even threw a few threats before he gave in and agreed to get help. My love for Jordan was a bliss, I knew I was secured with him. I didn't even need to ask because even a small child would see the love we had for each other. He made sure to always hold me in high regards, spoil me and everything. You know when they say, I respect even the soil that she steps on, that was Jordan with me. He respected me to a point that even today I still regret ever going outside our marriage to get what I didn't have, which was happiness. Well, Jordan and I met in the library, I was a librarian and he was there to get some books. It's really strange and undefined how we actually fell in love with each other. I mean, Jordan was a way different person compared to how I was and how I am. I am talkative, hyper. I love going out exploring new places and meeting new people while Jordan is a down-to-earth human being. He is an introvert. He doesn't like crowded places nor exploring. Even if we were talking, you wouldn't hear him say more than three words, especially if we were around people or during family gatherings. So he came back to the library the following day and he had bought me lunch. Mind you, that time no one is allowed to enter the library with food or beverages. I don't know how he convinced the security guard to enter, but he did, and he came to my desk and said, I brought you lunch, I hope you don't mind. I appreciated his kind gesture, but at the back of my head, I was laughing. I wondered how this weird guy approached a girl like me. Days passed and I kept thinking about the weird guy who brought me lunch at work. As I was thinking about him, I couldn't help but laugh at how he approached me. 
So one day he came to the library again and randomly asked to take me out during my lunchtime. I don't know what made me agree to his invitation, but I did, and I didn't even regret it. He was so shy to a point that he couldn't even maintain eye contact. He looked so innocent, but there was this darkness in his eyes. During our date, I noticed that he was a person who would react fast to some things like when the glass breaks or someone shouts. He would get palpitations and find himself holding on a glass he was drinking with, or a butter knife hard like he was controlling his disorder to not react. Besides the things that had happened at the restaurant he had taken me to, I actually enjoyed his company. He has a great and sharp mind. One would swear that he had some sort of university qualification, but he didn't. He is naturally smart, and him being an entrepreneur made him look like he is very educated, but he dropped out in high school. A few weeks later, we started dating. We were inseparable. I don't know why I was so attached to him because we were two different people, but I was very much attracted to him. You know when you really or deeply love a person, every time when you see them or think of them, your heart skips a bit. Not to mention when they touch you or talk to you, there are those butterfly things that always tingle you in your stomach and somehow find yourself blushing. That's what was happening to me. He had all the right words to say to make me melt and I fell for him every minute. We dated for some time then he proposed in the most romantic way. Well, I found it romantic. And I liked the fact that there were no people and he didn't go through too much trouble. He only made dinner and lit candles with some petals. I loved it and I said yes. As much as Jordan and I were different, but in our hearts we were the same and more. We loved each other and that was enough for us. Yes, some people judged our relationship, asking how an extrovert gets married to an introvert, but we knew that people would always be people. They always have something to talk about, so we focused on ourselves and our growth. We got married and that event where he attacked the guy for kissing my hand happened. We spoke about it and he told me the whole story about his childhood which was something he didn't want to share during our dating phase. He shared a lot about him that I didn't even know. I mean, I would ask about his past and parents. He would only tell me that his parents had passed on and nothing more. We were married for three years and things started changing. When I say changing, I don't mean in a good way, but in the worst way possible. I started realizing that Jordan and I were way too different than I had thought. He was what I love, but not what made me happy. I started realizing that I had contributed so much in our relationship and forgot about my own happiness and self-worth. Jordan is a workaholic. He is always serious, working, going out to eat, romantic dinners, and spending a lot of money on me like I was selling. I didn't like all of that. I loved him, yes, but I was not happy. No matter how much he had tried to make me happy, but he was failing dismally. I had once tried to introduce him to clubs and exploration but he just got bored and it was like I was alone in the whole thing. We had tried a few therapists regarding his condition, but we found out that it wasn't really curable. You can only get a diagnosis or medication for it only. The only way to control it was to talk to a psychotherapist or find something that you would take out all your frustrations and anger on, like hitting the wall or going to the gym or buying a punching bag. I didn't think Jordan needed all that. We didn't need all that. The only thing we needed was for him to be healed and stop this condition forever. In this marriage, I felt like I was trapped in a relationship or marriage that has full of love, but unfulfilling. I mean, I love being intimate, exploring new styles and positions, but Jordan was always all about the simple and straightforward intimate moments. He would sometimes give up while I would still be enjoying the moment and begging for more. He would just tell me that he was tired, which came to me as a huge bummer. So I would end up satisfying myself with some toys which I didn't want. Our marriage became so dull like we were old people who have joint and muscle problems. Jordan being a self-employed architect and a trader, he had a little to no time to even spend with me. I had noticed that when I took a two month leave off work, even during the weekend when we were supposed to be spending time together. He would always make excuses about being busy with the client's building plan that he was drawing. I knew that he would only trade during the weekdays because the market only works during business days and not on weekends besides Bitcoin, which runs for the whole seven days of the week. Over time, I started seeking excitement and validation. I wanted to feel happy for once since my husband was not doing the job. I tried going out a few times, even tried taking Jordan to explore a few countries, but it was like I was the only one on the trip because he was stuck on his work. The only time he would actually give me his attention was during dinner, or we were not indoors. 
So at work, there is this co-worker of mine who always tried luck on me, but since I was married, I couldn't give him a chance. My co-worker and I were like a combo that communicated so well. We had the same personalities, same interests and desires. One day there was a year-end party for all the employees at work. The guy was there and he invited me to go with him to an annual music festival that was taking place in New Orleans. I wanted to decline his offer, but I thought about my boring marriage life, so I went with him. We had so much fun, we danced and drank. I felt like I was where I was made to be. The conversation between me and the guy was flowing. No one was forcing anything. The connection and the spark was there. As the night proceeded, I found myself entangled in a passionate affair with my coworker named Jason, male, 28. Though he was a bit younger than me, he made me feel alive. He didn't have to try hard to know what I needed in order to be happy. I felt like he just knew what I needed without me even saying a single word. Well, our affair started that night when we went to the festival. On that night, a lot had happened. All I can remember is that one minute we were drinking and dancing, well more like jamming to the soulful music that was playing, the next minute we felt each other's heartbeats. I felt like I had finally found what I had been looking and longing for. I loved Jordan a lot, and I knew that he also loved me too much. But love alone is never enough when there's no happiness in it. I respected my marriage and loved the way Jordan was loving me and holding me in high regards. But that was not enough. I felt like there was something amiss, and I had found it through Jason. He, Jason, was what I had always been praying for, what my soul had yearned for, and finally the universe had answered my heart and soul desires. I knew that if Jordan was to find out about the affair, he would be broken and maybe worse than that. That man really loved me, that's all I can say. In my marriage, I felt alone and neglected. My needs were not met. So the affair that I had with Jason provided me with a temporary reprieve from my marital dissatisfaction. I believed that by indulging in this forbidden passion, I could or would awaken something in my husband Jordan and break through his nonchalant demeanor. Jason was explosive like I was both in traveling and intimately. We were intimately connected, you know, and I loved and enjoyed every moment that we had shared. He knew how to explore my body and make me find myself speaking a foreign language. My affair with Jason went on for some months, I think eight to nine months if I'm not mistaken. We almost dated for the whole year, but the universe and God had other thoughts about the affair. Jordan found out about the affair, and it didn't go well to a point that even today I am still feeling the wrath of my own medicine. When Jordan found out about the affair, I didn't think twice. I ended the affair with Jason even though it was too late and the damage had already been done. If there was someone to blame in all of this drama, that person would be me. I mean, I failed to stay loyal and faithful to my husband like I had said on my wedding vows. I wanted more than what God and the universe had blessed me with and went against my oath to love, cherish, be faithful and loyal to my husband through sickness and in health. I craved what my husband didn't give me and I failed to hold and ignore the temptations. Instead, I fell for it. When Jordan discovered the truth about my infidelity, he was devastated. His trust in me shattered, and I know he felt betrayed and humiliated. By the way, Jordan found out about the affair when one sunny weekend afternoon, we were spending time together after a very long time. I was happy to see that he was changing and becoming the man that I had fallen in love with, but intimately I still needed Jason for my satisfactions. That day, when Jordan and I were chilling in, watching Netflix while reminiscing about our first date and looking at our pictures and videos, I accidentally, well, I say accidentally because I have been keeping my phone to myself, making sure that Jordan doesn't get to it, left my phone on top of the coffee table and went to take a bath since Jordan and I had planned to have our dinner out. So Jason called while I was still bathing and preparing for the dinner date with my husband, and Jordan answered my phone. So when I went back to the lounge to get my phone, I found Jordan looking at it, well more like going through it. When I got closer, I discovered that he was reading my text messages with Jason. I asked him what he was looking at and I needed my phone. The only thing he said to me was, is this what you always do when you go to work? You sleep with your coworkers? His question caught me off guard. And when I looked at him, I saw that he was trying by all means to control his rage, but he was highly enraged because there were veins coming out of his forehead. I tried explaining to him, 
Well, more like trying to lie about my affair, but he couldn't hear any of it. Instead, his anger kept escalating up until he couldn't keep it in anymore. He couldn't control it. So he just took my phone with him and stormed out of the house. I was super scared. I didn't know what to expect with Jordan because of his intermittent explosive disorder, IED condition. You can't guarantee what you can expect from him. We had tried for so long to make him be able to control it, and he had been doing a very great job at it. But within a blink of an eye, I am the one who brought it back in full force. As much as Jordan's disorder was worrying me, especially since he had stormed out of the house, but what terrified me the most were the pictures that I had been sending to Jason. Jason and I were exchanging sexy pictures of ourselves, including the intimate pictures that we had taken when we were in our moments. I didn't know if Jordan had seen the pictures, but obviously he had, and I didn't want to see his reaction to them. I mean, I had never sent my own husband those kinds of pictures, but I was able to send them to my coworker. So I remained in the house until he came back, of which he came back right after midnight. Mind you, I had started being worried about him thinking that maybe he had done something to himself or something had happened to him, only to find out that he was okay and not even drunk or anything. The following couple of days were really tough on me because Jordan hadn't given my phone back. He was back to his normal self like nothing had happened. Though I tried to be normal and move on like he was, but I was unsettled. That time I couldn't even ask him about my phone because I didn't know what or how his reaction would be, so I just let him be. It was very unusual for Jordan to just be quiet and not do anything. I smelled something fishy with him. I told myself to wait for the worst and not relax until I got my phone back. One week later, I managed to get myself a banner phone to call Jason to check if he was okay. I was worried that maybe Jordan would have done something to him, you know, and I found out that he was fine. Which came as a huge relief to me. Little did I know that the worst was yet to come. So when I got to work, I was called by my boss and I got fired on the spot, along with Jason because we had gone against the job's code of conduct. As I was still shuddered like that, one of my colleagues who was also my friend came to me and showed me the worst thing that would ruin someone's life. My pictures alone with Jason's were all over the internet. I couldn't believe it. And I knew that only one person couldn't actually do that because he was the one who had seen the pictures and he had been acting weird and strange. To think that was the least he had done. He continued by closing all my bank accounts. Well, not closing, but more like took all my savings and every cent that was in my accounts. I was so depressed, my life had taken a very huge and worse turn ever. I tried calling Jordan using my banner phone, but he didn't answer my call. I found myself calling Jason and he bluntly told me to never contact him again and he wanted nothing to do with me. As if that wasn't enough, days later I received divorce papers stating that Jordan was filing for a divorce and I will be leaving my marriage with nothing but my clothes. I had no money, no job, I had nothing. I tried reporting the picture case to the police department, but I didn't get any help. Instead, I got, that's what you get for going against your wedding vows and acting like a hook, as if that was not shattering enough. It was heartbreaking. I literally and officially had nothing under my name. The house that we had both contributed to, Jordan took it. There was or is no one to blame. Everything that is happening to me is the result of selfishness and greed. I wanted more than what I already had and desired for an outside experience and left my husband in the house to get out to another man's house to satisfy my dark desires. I should have stayed and held on to my husband, or at least get him help at the men's clinic. Guys, I really don't know what to do. I know that I had been in my mom's house for too long. Yes, I had gone back home. Chickens were back home to roost. Please tell me how to deal with this. How do I recover from everything because I have opened new bank accounts, and that is the only thing that I have managed to do. I tried applying for jobs, but the pictures that were on the internet made me lose all the opportunities that I was getting. I just can't take it anymore. It's hard and I need a break from everything. Please advise me. How do I clean my image and reputation? Yes, I can't take back what has happened, but I want some change. I am tired of living like this. I am slowly sinking into depression. Please, any advice is acceptable. The only thing I won't accept is judgments.